Harlan's through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through, goes to the shot, oh, what a goal! Candles are burning tonight, yeah, you are. Arriving Ryan O'Neill from an almost impossible angle, and that's the rousing score I'm now we're looking for. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Sideline Night Podcast. We have another weekly club roundup show and we're looking back at the action on Thursday and Friday nights. Um, we'll do so with highlights from Clan Earns top of the table clash against Cross McLean. They won by seven in the end. And we'll also have highlights from Bally Hagen's win over on Port Moore, which was on Thursday night. And coming up then, we spoke to James McCormack after that game, the Bally Hagen captain. So um, we have an interview with him coming up at the end of the show too. So as usual, we'll start with the Division 1A action. And the main event was in Clannern on Friday night. And Clannern overcame Cross McGlenn by seven points in Friday's top of the table clash in Division 1A. The sides were evenly matched for long periods, but it was Conor McConville's late goal that widened the gap in the end. Cross McGlenn got the game up and running with the first two scores of the day before the home side opened their account with a pointed free. Ronan Fitzpatrick slotted over a point to restore their two-point advantage. Conor McConville responded at the other end with a pointed free, which was soon cancelled out by Cross McGlenn and the halfback Callum, Callum Comiskey. Clan Irons' own centre half back charged up the field beyond the final score of the half, and that was Shea Haffron, who made it 4 3 in favour to the Rangers at half time. Garvin Carragher grew that lead at the start of the second half before Aidan McConville pointed for the home side. Cross could have been further ahead, but for a fine penalty save um, from the Clan Iron goalkeeper. Emmett McGee then shot forward to th- tie things up before Conor McConville gave the host the lead for the first time with a point. The sides continued to, to trade scores, leaving one point the difference um, before Clannaren really took control of the game. The reigning league champions finished with a flurry, rattling off the final 1-3 of the day. McConville slotted home the game's only goal with the final kick to put his side two points clear at the top of the table. Elsewhere, goals from Arne McKenna and Niall Smith Handed Madden a 2 11 to not 8 win over Drummond Tee on Friday night. While on Thursday night, Graham Moore grabbed their first win of the season. It was a late pointed penalty from Jason O'Neill after Ryan Robbery had been fouled that saw them pass Cleve not 11 to not 10. So that leaves Clannern um, on 20 points and two points clear at the top of the Division 1A league table. Cross McLean remain in second place there on 18 points although they have played a game extra on the league leaders. Silverbridge are in third place. They didn't play this weekend, and they have 13 points, while Cleavey are just below that on 11 points. The Harps and Madden are both on 10 points in fifth and sixth position, although um, the Harps didn't play this weekend either. Graham Moore, as I said, they picked up their first win, but they still sit in seventh place, and they're on four points, while Drummond T are at the bottom there on two points. Um, so that's the Division 1A roundup on results in 1B then. Um, Mullabon grew their lead at the top of the Division 1B table as they saw off Bally McNabb by the minimum of margins on Friday night. The sides were level a number of times throughout the contest, but the home side edged ahead when it mattered at the end of the game. Jack Rugan shot over the first score of the game before the nab hit the net. Grugan's effort dropped short, but Don O'Toole was on hand to capture possession and raise the game's First green flag. Mullabon responded with a goal of their own at the other end through Cormac Smith, while Nell Lowy pointed to tie the game. Cormac McKee slotted over a mark and Aidan Toner both swapped scores with Fergal O'Brien as the sides headed into the break level 1 3 apiece. Pace Hughes and Jack Rugan got the knob up and running for the second half before Ryan Kelly and Finian Maguire traded points. Rory McKeon and Daki, uh, sorry, Niall Lowy both split the post to level things up once again. O'Brien and Maguire exchanged efforts while Lowy and Tiernan Murphy handed Mullabon a two-point lead. And Pierce Hughes and Jack Rugan converted dead ball efforts, but the winning chance fell to Niall Lowy, who landed a huge free to see his side ahead, 1-10 to 1-9 at the full-time whistle. Sarsfields and Mahari couldn't be separated on Friday night as they earned a share of the spoils. 
Sarsfield's looked to have done enough late on, but Niall, Mac- Niall McAllen kicked the final score to see the game finish level. The home side shot into an early three-point lead before Matthew McAll opened Mahari's account. A second from McAll and a, f- a free from Niall McAllen levelled the game with a few minutes left before the break. Colin Stevenson nudged the high moss men in front before him and Ashin Koshnahan traded scores. That saw Sarsfield's ahead at half time um, with the minimum margin, the difference not five to not four. Koshnahan levelled the game for Mahari at the start of the second half before trading dead ball efforts with Michal McKenna. McGowan and Koshnahan also cancelled each other out, as did Colin McKeon and Nell McElhinn. Another Kushnahan free edged Mahari ahead before two from Stevenson and McKenna put Sarsfields ahead um, by one point during all the time. There was one chance left, however, and McElhinn raised the final white flag of the night to see the sides finish all square, not 10 each. Cullerville earned a two point home win over St Peter's on Friday evening, not 9 to not 7. Clan Gale were huge winners over Cullihanna, 4 9 to not 10, with Jack Lavery hitting the net twice and Brandon O'Hagan and James Austin also um, raising green flags. So that leaves Mullabon remain at the top of the table with 17 points. They also they have four games left, while most of the teams have either two or three games left. Clan Gale are on 15 points in second place, with Cullihanna just below them on 11, and Cullerville and Mahari are also on 11 points, so that's in um, places three, four and five. Uh, Cullihanna, Cullivilla, Mahari all win 11 points. St Peter's are just above their allegation zone in 6th position. They're on 9 points, while Ballymcknab have 8 and Sarsfields have 6 at the bottom of the Division 1B league table. In Division 2A then, Kea Kruppen remain at the top of the Division 2, 2A table following their convincing win over Grange on Friday night. 18 points separated the sides at the full-time whistle with Scores from Ben Matthews, Ross, Mc, Ross McGee and Owen Keane helping Kruppen earn a 3.19 to not 10 away win. The Oaks remain in second spot, just one point behind the league leaders thanks to a two-point win over Katie on Friday. Pace Oaks built up a six-point advantage by the time the short whistle sounded, leading 1-5 to not 2 at the break. Katie raced back into the game with a goal of their own in the second period, but um, goals from Rory McKay Rory Duffy and Ken O'Hara was enough to give the Oaks a 3-8 to 1-12 victory. Elsewhere, Shane O'Neill's picked up their fourth win of the campaign as they saw off St Paul's by two points, 1-10 to not 11. So Kerr Kruppen remain in top spot in uh, Division 2A. They're on 16 points with Pierce Oaks just below that on 15 points and the Oaks also have a game in hand over um, Kerr Kruppen. In third place is St Paul's. They have 13 points, with Katie just below that on 12 points. Shane O'Neill's are in fifth position. They have 11 points, with Tully Sauron just below that on 7 points. And then the two teams at the bottom of the table, Grange and Alec Moore, both have 6 points apiece. Moving on to Division 2B, and we had our first league winners of 2024 on Friday night. Uh, Blake captured the Division 2B league title as they saw off Tiernan Oak by the minimum of margins. After back-to-back defeats on the road to Dianus on Wolf Tones in recent weeks, Blake got back to winning ways in Portadown. It was their 10th victory of the campaign um, for Blake, and they have earned promotion to Division 2A for next season with two games remaining. Cross Seconds picked up their first win of the season after a couple of close shaves in recent weeks, and they beat Clannard Seconds by two. Bernard Cassidy um, claimed the all-important goal for the Rangers, while Johnny Murda chipped in with not seven on the night. Johnny McKeever had an inspirational display at wing half back, and he chipped in with not two as they saw out a 110 to not 11 win. White Cross earned their um, second one-point win in a row as they nudged past Wolf Tones on Friday night, not nine to one five. That sees them take four spot, and White Cross are still well in the promotion shakeup uh, in Division 2B. So, Balik promoted to Division 2A with two games left to play. They have 20 points. Wolf Tones um, are just below that on 14 points, while Clanner and Seconds are in third spot with 13 points, and White Cross also have 13 points on the top four teams. 
I've all played 12 games, so they they all only have two games left. Tiernan Oog and Derry Noose are the next in line. Tiernan Oog have 12 points, while Derry Noose have 10. Clonmore are in seventh place on three points, and Cross Merlin Seconds also have three points. Um, so the bottom four teams, they've all played 10 games, so they all have four games remaining at the end of the league. Um, Division 3A then. Ballyhagen kept their promotion push from Division 3A on track with an impressive victory over on Portmore on Thursday night. Just one point separated the sides at half time, but Ballyhagen pulled away after the turnaround. James McCormick opened the scoring before a brace from Matty Walsh put the home side ahead early in the game. Mark Hughes and Ryan Gorman traded scores before McCormick slotted home the first goal of the night. Cormac Kieran, who should have had a goal himself but saw his effort rattle the bar, traded scores with McCormick and James McCann. Walsh and Connor knew tie things up before James P. McKeever put Bolly Hagen ahead at half time, 1 5 to 0 7. A double from McCormick, along with Hughes' second, saw the away team stretch their lead to four at the start of the second half. Jude Lavery pulled one back for Portmore, but it was cancelled out at the other end of the field by Kevin McCallum. James P. McKeever then raised a second green flag for Bolly Hagen, while Gorman and McCormick exchanged efforts. Paul McCallum claimed a third goal for Bolly Hagen after coming into the action as a second half substitute, while Gorman and McCormick traded scores in the final few minutes. On Friday night, Fork Hill rattled off seven goals to overcome the summon by just four points and that saw them retain their spot at the top of the table. Shane Mackle kicked not seven for the summon, while Darren Hughes claimed their major, but Fork Hill saw out a 7-3 to 1-17 victory. A second half goal from Marty Moon helped keep Middletown in um, the promotion hunt with their eighth victory of the campaign. They saw, saw off Urug on home turf by nine points, 1-11 to not five. Coldsland also picked two points, picked up two points on Friday night, beating St Michael's not 17 to not 12. And that leaves the table then in Division 3A. Fork Hill remain at the top of the table, having played 12 games. They're on 18 points. Bollyhagen have also played 12 games and they have 17 points. While just below that, Middletown have 12 points. Sorry, they have 16 points from 12 games. So just a few points separating um, the teams at the top of the table. College Land have jumped to fourth. They're on 11 points with Portmore just below that on 10. And Arogue have nine in sixth position. St. Michael's and the Summon are the two bottom teams in Division 3A. And St. Michael's have seven points while the Summon are currently sitting at the bottom of the table on six. In Division 3B then, Thomas Davis um, picked up another win in their Division 3B1 campaign and they continued their winning form. They overcame Redmond O'Hanlon's not 13 to 1 7 to confirm promotion to Division 3A for next season. St Peter's bounced back from last week's defeat to O'Hanlon's and they travelled to Dorsey on Friday night. The Lurgan men picked up a seven point win 114 to 2 4 and that saw them also secure promotion. In Division 3B2, Claddy picked up an impressive 118 to 3 6 win away to Mullabrack on Thursday night. Um, Philip McGill, Damien Carvin, and Liam Rice were the goal getters for the home side. For Claddy, Liam Doyle was the main man up front and he finished the night with a personal haul of 1 8. Jared McGill chipped in with 0 3, while Jared, Jared Grimley and Colm Savage hit 0 2 each. Kieran Savage, Ben Cunningham, and Kieran Conley all claimed not one apiece for Claddy. Clevy Seconds earned their fourth victory of the league campaign when they hosted Madden Seconds on Friday evening. 11 points was the difference in the end of the game, with Clevy winning 4 13 to 1 11. So that's all the scores of the games on Thursday and Friday. There is a, another game, a Division 1B game, to be played on Monday night. Mullabon host um, Cullihanna in a refixed game. So we'll hear from James McCormick now. I spoke to him after Ballyhagen beat Portmore on um, Thursday evening. And just before we, we finish up, um, congratulations to the Armagh Camogues. They put in another impressive shift today and they beat um, Wicklow at home 
nine, eighteen to two five to keep their win and run intact on their top of the table and um, joined with Tipperary. And also best luck to the Armagh Miners. They're taking on in Mayo in Longford tomorrow in the All Ireland semi final. It's the first time an Armagh side has got that far at that grade since 2009 when they went on to win the Ireland. So hopefully the boys can do well tomorrow and get into the Ireland final. And best luck to them and we'll hear from James McCormick now. So James, a big win here in Portmore. It it keeps you in the promotion hunt. Yeah, it was uh it was important to get the win there the night. Uh we had a bad, bad few weeks there, a few bad results. But uh got a win last week. Got so two wins on the road. It's never easy going away from home but uh, it was good to come here right through injuries but you, you play whoever you've got and you work hard and you get the result and it worked out tonight. And the, the way the league is, James, probably just momentum's huge because you've had a great start, as you say, dipped for a couple of weeks but you're sort of back on track now. Yeah, we had a, we had a brilliant start uh, and then uh, first six games we went very well. They were nip and tuck some of them games, some of the games you pulled away and then one bad result and it looks bad like then you got three or four bad results but you turned around momentum's a big thing and there's a few odd teams now had a good run and they had a poor start to the start of the league like but uh hopefully we take it into the last three games and you just keep on building take game by game and see what it brings it like it's a very very tight league like yeah i was, I was just about to say that yourselves fork hill and uh, middletown are all at the top of the table it looks like three teams taking two promotion spots like it's going to come down to the wire it's uh no it's definitely nip and tuck like uh we beat fork hill away a few a few weeks ago up there and then they came to our pitch and uh, they the were a far better team on the night like the just really cut through us but uh, and then Middletown very good team we got a late goal against them uh, so it's, it's it's just whoever gets the last score whoever gets the momentum as you say uh, but it's a very tight league like it's just one point separating everyone I know we played the end of the night so puts maybe a bit of pressure on the teams tomorrow night uh, we have a wedding tomorrow so we had to play it tonight so we hope you have a good weekend and we'll be watching the results to see how that goes tomorrow night and because because it's so tight, James probably every point counts. Every, if, even if it maybe comes down to score difference, like literally every point on the field counts. So like it's just about taking it game by game at this stage if for the last couple of weeks. Oh, it definitely is. Yeah, it's like we were there. Maybe we had a college down. It was a bad Sunday there last week, and it ended up a draw. But we felt hard done by maybe. Uh, but that's that's the that's the game. Like you need to you need to take your chances. It's no one fault but your own. So uh, every point counts. You don't want to be conceding too many points, and then you want, don't want to lose the league and score difference. So uh, no, it's definitely it's tight, but it's good. Like there's three teams there, so you know you have to go out and win every game. It's like championship. You're, you're going out like a championship final every game, and you have to win them. Like so, it makes the league exciting and every game exciting. Like. And just before you go, James, um, I'll ask you about Peter McGrain, who's obviously broken into the Armagh team this year. Now, I know you would love him out here and, and playing for in the blue of Ballyhagan, but he's playing some stuff for Armagh, and I'm sure you're all delighted to see him doing so well. Oh, no, he's he's, a, he's some athlete, some footballer, like, and he's put some graft into Armagh, and now he's getting his reward, like, and he's showing what he can do. Uh, there last year against Clawmore specifically, uh, in the championship semi-final, he was unbelievable that night, like, uh, and now he's showing it at the county level, and... He's, he's he's just playing unbelievable so no it's brilliant to see you'd love to have him in the blue jersey but hopefully have him back for championship and he'll do the same but no he deserved he deserves what he gets because he's put hard work in there's no you'll not get a harder trainer or more a man more dedicated to the cause like so he's a brilliant player to have here and, and a brilliant player to have for him all, like. great James thank All you right, no problem thank you Harlan's through, he might go for it, still going, trying to barge his way through, goes to the shot, and draw it Arriving Ryan O'Neill from an almost impossible angle, and that's the rousing score I'm now we're looking for. This is Connor Turbot, kicks this one in, oh that's absolutely superb.